In this segment, we're going to validate the model, create loading for the model, and then we're going to determine um, support line layout just schematically and tendon layout schematically, and then move into um, tendon modeling in segment three. So before we actually add any gravity loads to this particular model, we want to just validate and mesh the model and make sure the model actually produces a, a valid solution. So we'll go ahead under the analysis option, we're going to select mesh generation and we're going to mesh the model. We're going to use the simplified meshing. So this means that um, the simplified option is similar to the old meshing algorithm in previous versions where uh, we don't really need to mesh any wall openings. This particular version allows you to, to add wall openings, but we haven't done that. So we'll just use simplified. Advanced would be used if we were to wanting, uh, wanting to mesh around wall openings. Um, we'll go ahead and save and mesh the slabs. And after this is done meshing, we want to look at um, areas that we might have a potential to refine and maybe uh, make some simplifications that allow us to mesh uh, with less elements or less nodes. Here we can see we have a couple of areas of densification. One on the, is here and here. We'll classify that as, as item one. And again, that's due to that small um, edge in the opening. So we can just straighten the opening out along that edge to, to eliminate some of this. Secondly, we have some areas here where we have small slivers in between openings that um, may be causing um, some of this densification in the mesh. So that happens in some of these locations. So one way to simplify this would be to combine openings if there are not walls between them um, and try to eliminate these tiny reentrant corners that, that might have just been a one-to-one -one transformation from the CAD file or even if you were to import a model from Revit. We also have something here uh, where we have a, a couple of edges that are very, very small. So we're going to go ahead and make some of those changes now. We'll go and um, just clear out the mesh. And to begin, we have um, walls between these openings, but I'm just going to go ahead and stretch this opening, for example, down to here and down to here. And even better would be is, is if we were to align the opening on the center line of the wall. We're not going to go to that extent. We're just going to make a few modifications here to see um, what can be improved most easily. Again, I leave one of the openings in place just to use it as a reference for the other opening in terms of the snap, and then I delete out uh, the opening that's there. So here I'm actually going to combine these openings and it's likely that there should be a wall here so we may add a component here or a beam. It looks like there should be a beam along this edge. So we'll add a beam for that edge just to support it and here I will just stretch this opening down. There might actually be a beam in between there, but we'll ignore that for now. And I'll go back to model and beam. I'll select uh, the beam option and I'm going to model a beam from um, this location down to here. Okay, now I could shift the beam over. The dimension between those two points, if we go back to home, and I use this option to dimension the dimension between here and I'm going to turn off snap orthogonal and here's is 0.89 um, so this is in feet so uh, we'll go ahead and generate a beam let's say that is 10.5 by I'll say 24 inches deep and then we need to align that. So I need to move the beam over um, so that it's uh, aligned in between these two locations. And we can also either dimension or we can measure. So in this case, I'll measure the distance between here. So between here and here is 0.23 feet. So to move that, I'll just select this 
I'll go to modify and I'm going to move by coordinates and this will be in the positive x.23 I'll just say move and that aligns that. Now we might have to make an adjustment to this opening here and again I'll, I'll use a line just to make sure I have that nicely aligned and snap at the edge of that beam. Okay, and then I can delete out this. Um, also, we're going to just make sure that this is snapped to the wall. So again, if I just create a reference line here and I move that like so, that allows me to snap to that edge. Here we're going to remove um, this corner. So I'll go to modify and I'll remove a point and I'll just remove these two points. Again, I'm going to use a reference line like so, and I'm pressing C to close the end of the reference line, and then I just delete out the reference line. So that's that's one region. Um, we have this area up here where we might want to straighten that corner out, just again to help produce a bit cleaner of a mesh, and we'll do that for that region. And we might, again, do something similar over on this side. So we'll repeat some of those steps. OK. In this case, we're just going to remove these openings. And we've combined a few of those other openings here in the middle. Okay, so at this point, um, we also, when we created this model, we were going to, we needed to make changes to the, to the depth of these beams. They're 20 inches currently. We're going to make them 24. So I'm just going to select those beams. Even if we select the columns, that's okay. We can categorize the change as beams. So if I select the beams, I'll now, because I've selected more than one item, I'll go to Modify Selection. And um, under the Beam tab, we're going to make these beams 30 by 24. Okay, actually, let's, let's go back. Let's make them 36 six by 24. So we'll select the beams one more time and use the same tool. Modify selection, beam 36 by 24. Okay, that's better. Okay, the drop panels will go individually and currently they're 18 inches. We'll leave them as, as they are. They're 120 by 146 roughly. We can go ahead and change that if needed. See, this is like 145.7, so we'll just round that off to 146. Okay, and we'll save the model. And again, we're going to mesh. So when I go back to analysis, I want to reset any node shifting that currently had been, been done and performed for my first mesh run. So to, um, to cancel out all the node shifting, we can just use this option to cancel node shifting. That basically assigns all the, the node shifts back to zero for all components. So for example, if I double click on a column and I go to FEM, this will show me what the node shifts are. This is set back to zero and we have similar input for beams, walls, columns, drop caps, etc. Um, so we'll now go back to Mesh and Save and Mesh Slabs. Okay, um, now we can see there's a little bit of a difference. There's some more uniformity in the meshing in this area based on the changes that we've made. So um, that's good to see. We, we've tried to eliminate some of the sources of potential mesh problems and densification. 
And this is helpful, especially if we're going to take this model and extrapolate this, low, uh, this floor vertically multiple times and copy it. We want to make sure we minimize um, as many mesh uh, shells and nodes as possible um, that produce a reasonable result. So now that we have a mesh in place, we're going to execute the analysis. Under the analysis, we'll select execute. And I'll do this for the service total case or combination. This includes really just self-weight since we haven't added any load. And we want to make sure this produces a result that is number one, stable, and we would get a stability warning if we did have an issue. And then we want to also just check the deformation, make sure the deformed shape seems reasonable um, in terms of what we have modeled. We'll select yes to save that solution. And now if we go back to the default display, this basically removes the shells from the view. We could also use visibility under FEM or under analysis. We can turn off shells here. Okay, or we can use this default display here or visibility default display. So that goes back to this, this view of only components. This makes it a little easier to see uh, the deflection. So we'll go up to um, slab Z direction and this will show us just the deformed shape of the slab under self-weight. We can see we have some pretty severe deflection here where we have this longer beam and then also we have deflection here. So this is, um, this is our main source, I guess, of bending in these two locations or our main regions that we're having more severe bending and more displacement um, due to just self-weight. Now, um, looking at the contour, if I go to the Render Model tool, under this particular load combination, I can produce a uh, deformed shape of the structure. Once the render model tool opens, we can produce that um, image. Okay, so we can see the, the contour here. This is just the color contour that was produced in the previous interface. And here, if we, for example, if we warp this, this will show us just a warped view. And you'll notice this just shows the contour warping. It doesn't show the frame element warping. That's why you see the beams that are still linear and straight. They're, they're not shown as warped because they're not a shell element. They're a frame element. But to show the, the compatibility between the frame and shell elements in terms of the dis displacement, we can use this option for um, deformed shape. And then we can just scale that back down slightly. And this kind of helps us just do a visual validation of what we have modeled. So this looks okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and use this as the basis for the um, remainder of this video and then moving forward into different segments for the design with post-tensioning. We'll go ahead and close the render tool or the adapt solid modeling window. And to, f to finalize this segment, we're going to add uh, gravity loads. We're going to add just basically um, dead load, superimposed dead load, and live load. And we'll have two different um, live loads. We'll have 100 PSF live load here in, the, in the, this core area. And then we're going to have um, 40 PSF live load everywhere else. The dead load we'll use is 20 PSF. So if I select the... Uh, slab region, I can map loads to that region using the loading wizard. So if we go to loading, under general loads, I'll use patch load wizard or I could use patch load. So using patch load means I would have to draw in the load like so. I would click on points that define the region that's being defined as a load or again I can select patch load wizard which maps load to the selected region. So we'll use the wizard and we're going to use 20 PSF or 0.02 KSF for dead load. And for live load, we will use 0.04 KSF. Now we have to add 60 KSF in this region. So I'll select that load or that, that slab and I'll go back to patch load wizard and it's cumulative in the program. So under live load, we just have to add 60. So 0.06 to equal our 100 
PSF live load. If I want to add a perimeter load onto the slab, we could again add line load just by manually inputting line loads around the perimeter, or we could use the line load wizard based on selected components. This doesn't necessarily have to be a slab region. If I select, for example, these beams on the perimeter, and an easier way to select those might be to turn off the view of the columns. So um, to turn off the view of the columns, I can go to visibility, just turn off columns, and then I can window select these a little bit easier than just pick selecting the, uh, the beams. Okay, so we'll add a line load on those on those beams. So I'll go back to loading. I'll use the line load wizard. This will be a dead load, and we'll use 0.5 kips per foot. And I'll create those, and that creates those on the center line of the beams. And then to display the columns again, we could either go back to model and use this option to display columns. I could also go to the blue eyeglasses under visibility and in this table here I could select columns. Okay, so we have our loading established and if we go to loading under load combinations um, in the next segment we'll talk about uh, which combinations we want to establish for deflection uh, checks, crack deflection checks, long-term deflection, um, uh, combinations to use to, to generate uh, stress and check stresses in the PT slab, and then strength combinations related to gravity, and also this initial case. Um, if we go to load cases, we can see that we're just using the reserved load cases dead and live. The user has the ability to add additional load cases here for different types of of general loads so you can you can add that using this add button and then labeling it specifically as a user defined label that will conclude this segment and uh, the next segment will be again discussing layout of strips um, schematic layout of support lines and tendons and then uh, setting up different load combinations to evaluate deflections, stresses, and strength level forces, flexural, shear action, and so on. Thank you.